Russia continues to lose numerous vehicles in the war in Ukraine. And while Ukraine is also losing many, they are being heavily supplied with more from many European countries, the US, and others. So Ukraine's number of armored fighting vehicles remaining before they run out is more based on how much these countries are willing to give them. Russia, on the other hand, only has whatever they can produce, which is way lower than the rate that they're losing them, and what they have laying around in storage. Once they run out, they're in real trouble. Armored fighting vehicles include everything from tanks, IFVs, and APCs, self-propelled artillery, and more. And they are all extremely important on the modern battlefield. I've already made videos counting the number of Russian tanks and artillery, which is what most people focus on. So now time for another type of vehicle that is equally, and in some ways, even more important. IFVs, or infantry fighting vehicles. In a sense, these fill a role in the middle between the big, heavily armored and gunned, but less maneuverable tanks, and the more flexible and troop carrying capacity, but less armored and lightly armed armored cars and trucks. An IFV can carry infantry into the battle like armored cars, but is also gunned and armored enough to stay in the fight like a tank. So again, they are a very important and valuable type of vehicle. That being said, just how many does Russia have before they run out? But first, real quick, our sponsor, NordVPN. Now I've partnered with them for a long time, and they give a special discount for my viewers over at nordvpn.com slash covert. But if for some reason you don't know, there are a VPN service that goes way beyond just being a VPN. For example, there are included threat protection, which is a major upgrade that blocks everything from intrusive ads and web trackers, as well as scanning files you've downloaded and URLs for malware. As of writing this, there are 5,729 servers across 60 different countries will enable you to access websites, play games, and even find discounts on games that might not be available in your own country. And that's just a few of the many, many features they provide. It's also real simple to use, and you can connect with just a click, and they're always highly recommended by security and tech experts. Go give them a try today, again at nordvpn.com covert. With that link, you'll get four free months on a purchase of any two-year plan. And the best part is, they have their 30-day money-back guarantee to make sure that you're happy with their service. And if you're not, you can simply get all your money back. So again, go get yourself protected with NordVPN. For this video, I'll keep it short and sweet. There's no need to drag it out by giving a lot of background information on IFVs and how they're used and how they're performing in the war. But again, they're able to bring troops to the front lines as well as stay and fight themselves. Now, some terms like armored fighting vehicle, armored personnel carriers, and infantry fighting vehicles are used slightly differently by different people. But in general, Russia's main IFV is a BMP, which actually in Russian stands for infantry fighting vehicle. But some organizations include BTRs as well, such as the military balance here. So to keep things a little clearer, we've counted and we're gonna list both the number of BMPs at each base, as well as the total number of all armored fighting vehicles, which includes BMPs with BTRs, MTLBs, BRDMs, and others. But that will not include tanks, self-propelled artillery, cargo and utility trucks, etc. Also another factor not considered is the condition of these vehicles, unless they're visibly and obviously beyond repair. These vehicles in storage do not get as much attention and maintenance as active vehicles. And that's true in Russia as well as the US and everywhere else. So they'd all need some level of refurbishing and repairs before being active again. Some might just be minor work, others might be well past the point of saving and possibly only good for spare parts. And real quick, a Twitter account named HIMARS helped out in identifying and counting these armored vehicles. They really deserve a lot of credit for a lot of the work done in this video. But we've identified 31 different bases storing armored fighting vehicles. So without further ado, let's start. To start, the 12th 95th, with 170 BMPs and a total of 183 AFVs. The 3018th, a big base with 521 BMPs and 651 total AFVs. The 94th, another big one with a lot of artillery, 252 BMPs and 752 AFVs in total. The 22nd, 254 and 702 BMPs and AFVs total respectively. The 111th had the most BMPs, 778, and a total of 800 AFVs. The 216th had zero BMPs, but a total of 326 AFVs. The 243rd also had no BMPs, but 120 AFVs. The 372nd, again, no BMPs, but 114 AFVs. The 120th, just 7 BMPs, but a total of 154 AFVs. The 7020th also had 0 BMPs, but 655 AFVs total. A base about 45 kilometers southwest of Cheetah also had no BMPs, but 158 AFVs in all. The 103rd had 480 AFVs in total, 304 of which are BMPs. The 349th, I couldn't get very high resolution satellite imagery of, so it's harder to count, but 305 BMPs and a total of 791 AFVs. 
the 769th, another big base with 632 AFEs, of which 587 are BMPs. The 2544th is the biggest, with 916 AFEs, 496 being BMPs. And then the remaining bases we checked had no BMPs, but a base in furlough had 170 AFEs. One near Bransk had 124. Another east of Yulan Udi had 199. The 163rd, 108. The 560th had 248 AFVs total, and the 61st with 104. Then, finally, there were 10 other bases that we didn't bother to purchase imagery of, but in Google Maps imagery, there were only 3 BMPs total between all these bases, and 530 totaled armored fighting vehicles. So, that all gives us a grand total of 3,677 BMPs in storage, and 8,917 totaled armored fighting vehicles, again, including those BMPs. Also, again, that's not counting tanks or self-propelled artillery or trucks, etc. And for note here, the green just means the imagery we used is from 2023, yellow 2022, and red 2021. The oldest imagery, though, are all from bases with very few vehicles, so that's why we decided it wasn't worth the expensive cost of purchasing new satellite imagery. And then also, after we're done counting, we like to check and compare with other sources to make sure we're not way off, which might possibly suggest we missed something. But the Military Balance 2023 states they have 4,000 BMPs in storage, and 11,000 AFEs as we define them. The BMP number is almost right on, and the little over 300 less that we had could easily be explained by additional vehicles that Russia has lost since the Military Balance was published in February, and also the fact that their counting would have been done at some point earlier. However, our AFV numbers vary a lot more. We had about 2,000 less. Now a few things could help explain the differences. Most notably, their numbers of 4,000 BTRs, 2,000 MTLBs, and 1,000 BRDMs are exactly the same that they stated back in 2019, which obviously isn't the case. So they haven't updated those numbers at all in at least four years. And I think it's also worth noting some of our potential errors, such as the possibility we misidentified some vehicles, such as command and engineering vehicles, which look real similar, or missed a few other small storage sites. But if I had to guess, I bet our margin of error is plus or minus 10% to be conservative. Now, Oryx has listed 2,049 IFVs that Russia has lost. Now, you'll see a higher number on their site, but again, as I said, some people categorize vehicles differently. And he includes things like BTR-82s and BMD-4s. But for our total AFVs, again, not tanks or SPGs, Oryx has 4,257 lost. So, just some simple math, if they continue to lose these vehicles at the same rate that they have been, Russia will run out of BMPs in about three years, and those other AFVs in about three and a half years. But again, it's important to note that not all these vehicles can be repaired and used. A good percentage might be beyond saving, and sure enough, we've seen some vehicles at these bases that haven't moved in 10 years. And also, Russia is building new vehicles as well. And finally, the rates of losses change. But probably in another two or three years, if they do continue losing vehicles at the current rate, they could be in a lot of trouble. And again, a big thanks to HiMars over on Twitter. He helped out not only counting these vehicles, but also finding and identifying the different bases. I was originally not gonna count these other AFVs as they're extremely difficult to distinguish from each other, but he's done an absolutely incredible job and has shown to be highly skilled at this. So again, go follow him on Twitter. They'll be posting the satellite imagery that we bought and also giving some more detail as well. Thanks.